I'm focused on factory farming. Uh, and, okay. and for those for those who are, who are new to it, I guess the uh, yeah. you know th this is the the system that produces much of the meat we eat. And uh, I think in recent years there have been increasing people across the political aisle uh, saying there's something wrong with the system. Everyone, fascinating interview today. If you're stuck in liberal media bubbles, you'll probably come away with the erroneous view that only liberals support cultivated meat. In fact, it was Donald Trump's USDA who helped actually pave the way for Memphis Meats, which is now Upside Foods, to become legalized in the United States. Let's take a look at the conservative American views. Important for any investor looking to get into the space who's trying to understand some of the American politics behind cultivated meat. Now, you say across the political aisle, that's actually kind of one of the topics I was interested in discussing with you and why I wanted to have you on, because I think it's an interesting, you know, it's an interesting political dynamic. Most people may think about animal rights activism as a traditionally left wing or liberal issue. But you've made reference in, in our conversations over the years as well to this actually being more of an issue of bipartisan concern than people might appreciate. Tell me more about what you think is as the conservative case for animal welfare and concern about animal rights and where you think that comes from. Yeah, I mean, conservatives have always opposed animal cruelty. They're, you know, you, you see these people saying, oh, only liberals care about, about animal cruelty. That, that's crazy. We've had animal cruelty laws almost since the founding. These were uncontroversial laws to ban the worst forms of cruelty to all animals. 1820. Okay. So you've got laws in, in, uh, in the early states back in the 1820s. You've got, um, you've got these, these laws existing for hundreds of years. And, and the crazy thing that's happened in modern times is factory farming lobby came along and created exemptions under these laws. They said, we know we're violating the animal cruelty laws, but we're going to create some exemptions to allow us hmm. to do it. But, but on, your, on your point of conservative support, I mean, the, the, the strongest federal law we have, the Humane Slaughter Act, was signed into law by President Eisenhower. It was upgraded in a push uh, spearheaded by Senator Bob Dole. More recently, uh, Tucker Carlson has said that he dislikes the way factory farms treat animals. Joe hmm. Rogan has talked about this a whole lot on his, on his podcast. Uh, you've got people at other parts of the aisle. Uh, Robert, uh, Robert Kennedy Jr., he, he started a group to sue factory farms. I mean, that's, that's how he got started. So I don't know if you're familiar with this. You must be. I mean, this is an area you're following closely. There's a company called Memphis Meats. Have you heard of Memphis Meats? Yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah. So I actually met their founder years ago while we were racing cars. Like literally okay. we, were, we were like a car racing event. It was fun. He and I got paired and he was telling me about his company. I was telling him about my company. I was a biotech CEO at the time. And so we're like literally racing cars down the winding cliffs of California. It was awesome. We had a great time. So I stayed in touch, watched this company. Apparently it's done pretty well. And what they're doing is they're basically engineering meat for, you know, nutritive value. They claim for taste, for other, you know, for other reasons that might be commercial in nature. They're not killing animals to do it, but they're using cells derived from animals. So they're from the animals, but that doesn't require torturing or killing them. But they actually make what they claim to be. I have, I have no idea whether or not I can't vouch for the factual specifics of the product, but could in the long run, and there's other companies like them that are making meat that could be better than normally derived meat from factory farming or from other forms of traditional meat production. And what I thought was fascinating was, so this is just a food that's out there. Maybe you want it, maybe you don't. It's being served as a delicacy in some restaurants across the country, as I understand from reading the news mm -hmm. and, and knowing the guy who I've stayed in touch with where they are. But then I wake up one day and see that the state of Florida, the same state where the ballot measure went to the people to say that we're against certain practices used in factory farming, where the people of Florida, red, hard red Florida, have said they're against it, and I would have voted accordingly as well. That is the same state that actually banned, just like outright banned, the sale of any lab-based meat or any engineered meat from being sold. So not to say that you get to choose to do it, but to say that actually you don't have the choice as a consumer in the free state of Florida to be able to make that choice, which I thought was fascinating because it's the same state that actually went in the other direction when it came to this other question on factory farming. So, so what do you make of all of that? Because I think it's just so interesting. Yeah, I, I think these state bans yeah. on the sale of, of growing meat are, are just crazy. I mean, they're, they're so obviously. How many are there? 
Well, there, there, are, there are two states that have already done it. So Alabama is the other one. Okay. And uh, there are a whole bunch of states that have got bills in the legislatures now. So there are, there are a whole bunch of these yeah. states where it's in the legislature. Uh, and What's the, the argument thing, for it? You're a guy who can always offer the argument for the other side. What, what's, the, what's the best argument for it? Well, I mean, honestly, they've been transparent about it. <laughs> the, argument, mm-hmm. the argument is that this is bad for the incumbent industry. I mean, this is... Are you, you know, kidding the, me? So it's not that it's going to be like unhealthy for people or there's some sort of like health... There's been a little bit of that, but I mean, also okay. if you go and look at the like the the uh, legislative uh, session in Florida where they where they were deliberating this, there was no pretense. I mean, there was there was a little bit of like, oh, you know, this hasn't been tested by the FDA or something, you know. But like mostly, suddenly we all want everything to be tested know, by the is, FDA. Interesting the, how that, that works. Yeah, thing, right? the failed drug administration. Okay. Yeah, the uh, but but the uh, you know otherwise it was really just this is going to hurt an incumbent industry. This is bad for this is bad for my constituents. I mean, we we there, we have a name for that. It's called <laughs> it's not called capitalism. It's called crony capitalism. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You have no, laws right. that are designed to protect and, and you know an industry from competition. The, the other people who are pushing these these bans are European socialists. So you've got in Europe, you've got a whole bunch of socialists pushing this and saying, oh, we don't, you know, we don't think that this is good for, we, we like maintaining the heritage. We want to protect this group of farmers and so on. And then you've got these uh, these conservatives in Florida. Yeah. And so it, it is this bizarre coalition where, where you have got anyone who just feels uncomfortable with something new, uncomfortable with innovation, uncomfortable with a new industry coming in, seems to have teamed up together to say it's not just that I don't want to buy this, which fair enough, but I want to ban it, which is, is yeah. just. A I mean, look, I, I think as somebody who is sympathetic to some of the points you're making, and you know, I think you and I are. I mean, I, I don't know if you're still. I remember you were in law school. Are you still vegetarian yourself? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, somebody who makes myself also a similar life choice. I am happy to say with clarity that I am dead set against any ban on meat in the United States at the state or federal level. I, I, are you at a similar place? Sure, yeah. And look, yeah, don't no ban. Don't, so, so, so it, would be, it would be silly to like, I mean, it was like a ludicrous idea, the idea of like banning a particular type of food. But then why on earth are we going out of our way to ban a particular type of meat? It, it just doesn't, it actually doesn't make sense to me. And it's fascinating. It, it raises real dilemmas for the future of the conservative movement, I think. It doesn't make sense to me either. And, and I think you see it's a, it is a bipartisan play. So one of the, one of the people who was most excited about DeSantis' uh, ban on, on meat growing was uh, Senator Fetterman. Uh, Senator Fetterman. Oh, really? Own, yeah. He has, oh, really? He, Interesting. He has his own bills to try and do similar things at the federal level. And uh, so using does, the Commerce Clause, to be sure, I'm sure. Using the Commerce Clause. You know, so does Senator Senator Klobuchar has something she calls the Dairy Pride Act. And what the Dairy huh. Pride Act would do is almond milk, soy milk would have to stop calling itself almond milk and soy milk because there are all these poor, consumed, uh, confused consumers out there who just keep buying almond milk when they meant huh. to buy cow milk. You know, I mean, Maybe, is that going to be part of Pride Month now? Is that, <laughs> that's is right. They're going to pass be, it during the month the of June. Step. Very interesting. So Amy Klobuchar is in favor of that. Is, she is. Or she's sponsoring that legislation. She's sponsoring that legislation. Yeah, so this yeah. is this really scrambles politics, this issue. You, what, what you see instead is who is beholden to the industry. And my and guess is the Freedom issue. Caucus, which, which I actually admire the spine that many members of the Freedom Caucus actually reflect, I my guess is the Freedom Caucus would be against something like this. That's absolutely right. That's yeah. absolutely right. So so we have we've seen a number of people. Uh, Rand Paul, for instance, has been strongly against this kind of. He's been great on these issues. Yep, has been very opposed to it. So no, I, I think you've you've absolutely seen that uh, where you've got principled conservatives and principled liberals who are opposing this uh, based on simple you know grounds of free markets, avoiding government bans on on things that that present innovation and and hope for the future. Again, excellent interview. I encourage you to watch the entire thing. Links in the description. Thanks as always for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.